Let's run through the Fallout 76 pre-flight checklist. The game won't be finished at launch. Check. T-posing NPCs. Check. Constant disconnects. Check. Cocking up beta access. Check. Shitty servers. Check. A huge advertising budget overselling the game. Check. Legacy bugs from an old game engine. Check. A ton of insider YouTubers hyping the product. Check. Contents of the pre-orders not delivered as promised. Check. A vast microtransactional infrastructure in place. Check. People on the subreddit hating on critical YouTubers. Check. Contractually voiding your consumer rights if you download the game. Check. Selfie cams. Check. A live service game singing from the same song sheet as Fallout 76. What could possibly go wrong? Keep still. Fix the damn volume settings on the shitty intro sequence. Fuck. Before I get into my initial thoughts about the Division 2 beta, I should qualify that I generally enjoy casual solo PvE in the Division 1, and I have just over a thousand hours played. I like it, despite its many and varied flaws. I also need to qualify that certain aspects of The Division 2 might change between now and launch. I'm strictly talking about balancing and design decisions, obviously. I'm sure all the broke ass shit will still be there when the game launches, and some of it will survive until the very end of its lifespan. And that opinion is based on historical precedent. The Division 2 is an interesting creation. I'll be raining fire and brimstone down on this game as a product, but make no mistake, there was some genuinely interesting content and design choices going on. There is definitely some fun to be had here, some interesting ideas, and some really good work has been done. But before we chow down on the testicles and reclaimed meat of this budget banger, let's clear one thing up right now. It's only the beta is not a magical catch-all counter-argument for any criticism of this game. Once upon a time in a land far, far away, a beta was an opportunity to show the prospective customer the finished product and allowed them a last-minute opportunity to make balancing suggestions and report any undiscovered bugs that slip through quality control. These days, a beta test is often just a publisher slapping down a broken unfinished product, fucked well beyond the point of a quick repair, full of well documented and unresolved bugs, where players establish the game is a mess, where there is zero fucking chance it will be fixed at any time soon after release. This game is three years in the making apparently. Any bugs are either gone for good, or here to fucking stay. Nothing significant is going to get fixed in the next few weeks, considering they haven't even finished making the fucking game. So what were my initial impressions when I first started playing? Well first off, they need to fix the fucking intro and title sequence which is popping everyone's eardrums and speakers every time they fire up the game. And no, I'm not kidding. After this, it was quite pleasant. The environment was new, pretty looking, thematically derivative of Fallout, I Am Legend and The Last of Us, amongst other things. My first impressions were surprisingly positive, for me at least. This said straight out of the gate the movement was a bit wank and a huge downgrade from The Division 1. We knew this was coming because if they carried over the character animations and models then everyone would demand they got their cosmetic microtransactions carried over too. And that was never going to happen. Based on the beta alone, there was an instant assumption that the player was entirely familiar with the game. 
and no fucking effort was put into grounding the player. You were parachuted into the plot with total disregard of whether you knew the backstory. I guess voice artists and cinematic cutscenes require money and having fucks to give. And enough staff left over from the other more lucrative IPs that Ubisoft is working on at the moment. So I followed the yellow brick road, pootled around, killed some generic bad guys, followed the general flow of the game, and it was okay. I kept looting random crap for make work, settlement building, busy work, and soaked up the atmosphere. In fact, there was a lot of busy work that was blatantly analogous to daily quests from other games. Pointless shit you have to do regularly to keep you logging in every day to maintain player engagement for no satisfying reason, like a mouse chasing through a maze for a piece of cheese. No purpose, no satisfaction, just shit you do for a little bit of cheese every day, keeping you engaged so they can sell you in-game stuff. The cityscape was okay, inferior to New York. Strangely, sometimes it looked superb, but mostly those were the parts that looked most like New York City. New York City was a tough act to follow. DC is an inferior location, but overall I think they did the best job they could here. The street level combat I really liked. Despite the annoying grenade and radio controlled IED spam, the random street battles with generic thugs were good fun, felt genuinely tactical and positioning cover and movement really counted. Play it smart and you can take on 10 guys solo and prevail. Face plant into a fight and you can be almost insta jibbed. Random street level gun battles were a fucking strength, probably my favourite part of the game. The selfie cam was a fucking blast. Normally I hate selfie cams in video games, but strangely the mixture of human misery, suffering and death really lent itself to selfies. I had a great time taking pictures of myself standing over murder victims and the contorted bodies of the fallen. It suddenly occurred to me that I would actually make a fucking excellent war photographer, although people would probably get a little bit upset if I was in every photograph grinning or doing a duck face. Still, everyone loves a sick selfie. The character movement now is bad. I've never been heavily pregnant, but the movement looks and feels like I'm nine months pregnant with my 15th child. Staring at the back of my character with my hip swivelling wiggle run and wonky gait, it just looks exactly how you would move if you were petrified that you were one hard cough away from accidentally firing out a newborn baby on the pavement between your legs. There is just something odd and Battlefield 5-ish about it, like your character is sliding across the ground whilst doing a slightly out of sync running animation. Like someone standing on a large skateboard, gently running on the spot whilst their mate pushes them around slowly. I can't quite put my finger on it, but the Animations don't look properly enmeshed with the world, and even if they did, they would still look a bit shitty. As for the anti-cheat, they say you should be careful what you wish for. I said I wouldn't trust the anti-cheat unless I saw people being banned quickly. Well, the easy anti-cheat did not disappoint. It started banning people immediately. In fact, it seemed to be immediately banning people for... Detecting the Division 2 game files. Yes, the anti-cheat was banning people for installing the game. Some people might have actually been banned for installing the anti-cheat. Yeah, well, I called it. I said the anti-cheat would be absolutely fucking useless. And 9am, day one, we have our proof. So let's talk weaponry. Or should I say sorcery? Or weaponmancy? or weapon lore, or some other casual mashup reference that combines modern firearms with fucking hobbits and witchcraft. From what I've seen so far, the weapons sound nice when the audio isn't bugging out, feel satisfying, and just like the Division 1, are a masterclass in gun porn. And just like real porn, it's superficially very satisfying, but once you know what's going on behind the scenes, it's all a bit grimy and off-putting. 
just like the weaponry in this game, depending on personal taste, of course. Once again, Terry Potter and Keith Evans, head of nerfing at Redstorm, took out the Necronomicon and went to work. It's the usual shit. 9mm SMGs doing more damage per bullet than a 7.62 NATO LMG. A 45 ACP pistol doing more damage per bullet than a 5.56mm NATO assault rifle. And some bizarro fucking crack smoking system of weapon modding where putting on a specific optic will do batshit crazy fuckery like reduce your damage to specific NPCs. Nothing more needs to be said about this really. It's childish, lazy and fucking stupid. A focus group with preschoolers could have come up with a more realistic system than this. I'm frankly unimpressed this shit has got worse than in the original game. Where it was already fucking terrible. The term unrealistic does not cover it. I'm talking space bats, lizard alien shadow governments and bras made out of bacon levels of what the fuckery. If they introduced a perk where you could shoot harpoons out of your tits, it would be relatively sensible compared to the firearms modelling. I fucking despair. Have you ever been on a holiday with one of your cretin mates who gets to the airport and says, Oh fuck, I forgot my passport. You know, the single most important thing they had to bring that was irreplaceable. Well, I think Ubisoft will get to the airport and say, Oh fuck. We forgot the story. It's like they just assumed that everyone would know why to give a shit about the characters and the story, but forgot to explain. Like nobody outside the project came in and proofread the story and asked the million dollar question, why should anyone care about the people and characters in this game? Someone once famously made an independent movie on a child's toy camera. This film is famous because it proved the point that if a story is good enough, people will put up with shit quality. That film proved that if people really cared about knowing what happened next, they would watch a whole film shot on a crappy kid's toy. The Division 2 is the exact opposite. It's a well-crafted and beautiful world environment where I don't give a fuck about anyone, anything, not even my own character. It's dull. It's boring. I don't have any fucks to give about the wankers I'm supposed to be saving. They are pointless. I would rather spend the apocalypse sitting on a rooftop sunbathing than putting myself out saving these nobodies that mean nothing to me or you. Without a decent fucking story and narrative, none of it matters. I liked the true sons more than the whiny hipster cunts I was supposed to be saving. If I had Real player choice, I would be shooting these pedal pusher wearing twats and looting their stuff, then heading off to the True Sons for some chest bumps and drinking competitions. Nothing about this game made me give a single fuck about my mission. The characterization was best summed up as a competition to see who was the least annoying twat, where everybody was losing. Let's break this one down into the good and the bad so we can crack this one out as quickly as possible. The good. Pretty much everything kicking off at street level, outside of missions, feels great. I loved the random street battles and picking my way through buildings and back alleys finding the best position to engage from. I can't put my finger on it but the general PvE gameplay kept reminding me of survival mode in some way. The settlement building minigame, which is basically safe houses crossed with Fallout 4, is derivative, but a genuine development, which adds content. I'm not yet convinced it's more than busy work designed to keep us logging in, but I'm open minded about it for now. The end game character building looks quite interesting. Fuck knows what will be in the final release build, but from what I've seen so far, it looks like you can really specialise and make some very weird ass exotic PvE builds. Although no doubt we will discover some insane abuses of this by stacking certain things or the maths won't work out as planned. 
the weapons artwork and environmental design is all rather nicely done. Not 100% finished for a fact, but visually and graphical bugs aside, the world they created here is looking pretty good. The visual and audio effects when coming under fire, dare I say suppression, were fucking brilliant. It was visceral, immersive feedback, but a little bit overbaked. I loved it, but sometimes it would sound and feel like you were being strafed by a squadron of angry A-10 warthogs. Nice. Then you'd notice you hadn't even been hit yet. Their suppression doesn't go all the way to 11. It starts at 11 and stays there. There is a mismatch here. But nevertheless, I love that holy fucking shit get behind cover feeling that it provoked. The enemy power level is brilliant. If you faceplant into a group, stand out in the open and go Rambo or just take one well-placed explosive right in the kisser, you can just die. I love that stupidity and bad tactical choices is punishable by death. It forces you to keep your fucking common sense switched firmly on at all times. It's also jolly pleasant to see that Ubisoft have included some nice easter eggs in the game to honour some of the right honourable veteran community members and some of the advertisers. This plaque honouring the Knights of the Shrubbery was found on the Botanical Gardens. There is also a rumour circulating that the green toxic vapour leaking up from the sewers is actually a little nod to the news dump videos. Personally though, I'm very pleased to see they're putting up credits in game because it's cheap and preferable to them hemorrhaging huge wads of cash by making statues in real life. For a company that bleats on about progressive politics and the environment, they sure have a strange way of wasting money. For the same cash that they spent on that statue in Los Angeles, Ubisoft could have flown out to some starving village in Africa where they don't have a fresh water supply, where all the kids are dying of cholera, and use that same money to buy the whole village pedo caches and cosmetic microtransactions. Because that's how disconnected from reality I think their monetizers have become. So let's talk about the bad. Fucking Deltas. Apparently they subcontracted the servers out to the lowest bidder. And it fucking shows. It runs like arse and is totally not optimised. It creaks and moans like a rusty crane in a Baltic gale. Servers, software, probably both are the issue. But it currently runs like absolute wank. The modelling, whilst beautiful and sometimes artful, is unfinished. I got stuck on invisible terrain and noticed robo rats running in a line, constantly respawning like they're on a fucking conveyor belt, then disappearing into the terrain. Fucking backup request spam was a thing. Annoying, constant audio prompts for help. Please fix it. Make it opt in. Make it stop. Please make the bad spam stop. They cheaped out on the VFX for shooting out windshields in cars. It now just looks cheap. The beta felt more like early, early access. Not beta four weeks prior to release. Crappy animations. Shoot a dog. It springs one metre to the left and insta drops. Shoot a cat and it can drop vertically like you dropped a concrete block on it. Some of these animations look rushed and unfinished, frankly like placeholder animations or something. Teleporting NPCs. Oh dear fucking lord, why are we even discussing this shit in 2019, fucking Christ. The speech files on the vendors fire every time you sell anything, so they end up sounding like broken robots if you spam sell items. Exactly what I wanted. Just what I needed. I can definitely use this. I've been looking for that. I was looking for one of those. Exactly what I wanted. The AI is so shit that at times 
Friendlies and hostiles take cover together in a huddled group, ignore each other and all shoot at their respective targets outside of the cover. I mean what the fuck. AI is too strong a word at this point. Artificial fucking dumb arsery is a better term. They are mostly entirely predictable. Unless they're doing something so totally mind-bogglingly fucking stupid you struggle to comprehend it. Grenade and RC explosive spam is real. Sound and graphics bug reports are now avalanching. Internally inconsistent terrain modelling is still an issue carried over from the original game. I found lots of occasions in PvE where you could take up position but your bullets would still clip into the terrain because clearly it didn't get fixed in early testing. Was there early testing? Inconsistent cover is still a very real thing too. For absolutely no reliable or consistent reason, sometimes in PvE you go to take cover in a crisis and suddenly find out that the precise one fucking two metre square piece of wall real estate you need to hide behind is not considered cover like the rest of the entire fucking street. And you die whilst trying to figure out what the fuck is so special about this little precise patch of wall. The skill vendor menus were broken and fucked me out of the game repeatedly, so I couldn't sort my perks out beyond a certain level. T-posing NPCs. Post-traumatic Bethesda syndrome incoming. Broken beta code giveaways with void keys. Currently, it appears that neither Ubisoft nor the social media advertisers are owning this one. People are just being directed to third-party vendors for resolution. Or just ignored. In true Fallout 76 style, the stuff listed in the contents isn't as delivered. They promised us extra stash space, not early access to stash space. They were clearly testing the pay to win waters here, but when customers got angry and they shit their pants, they neither offered something else in return, nor offered our dollars back. They said extra stash base. We didn't get extra stash base. We got ripped off. They gave us a perk instead. They lied. They said extra, not early. Perhaps the perk will come in a nylon laundry bag, or they'll give us Five pounds in in-game Ubisoft currency so we can buy pedo caches and win nothing nice instead. Bullet sponge bosses are still a thing. This is a thorny issue because some people rightly claim that this is an RPG so bosses should not be one-shottable and a spongy argument should not fly. This said and as noted by another YouTuber, the scaling in groups is balked. Running solo I could complete any and every challenge with a grey or green pistol. Literally. In squads, shit gets bullet spongy. I reckon this is a scaling problem more than anything. People should not be wiping because they all ran out of ammo on a boss. Overall, this felt like a game built well at ground level by the designers despite being fucked over at every possible opportunity by meddling senior managers and financial managers. I think the guys on the shop floor doing the real actual work cared about this game. Outside of their office, I'm getting the impression that the rest of Ubisoft sees The Division 2 as a pack mule for shipping loot boxes into people's homes, and they're more focused on other things. I see a lot of advertising, a lot of hype, and a lot of bullshit but I don't see much of any of the problems fixed. And if I'm honest, I don't really see a AAA game in the making. I have frequently described my relationship with The Division as like going out with a junky supermodel. Well, The Division 2 is a slightly less attractive sister who is addicted to meth instead. I've never been out with a supermodel, so maybe that's a bad analogy. But I've been out with a meth head. But you get my point. Lovely to look at, but an expensive high maintenance nightmare who will tell you anything you want to hear if they think they can get some cash out of you for the next fix. It's not just about how badly things are broken, it's the fact that there is a ton of stuff slightly broken. 
Sure, some of it looks easily fixable, but that's not the point. There is simply so much in the game that requires changing, fixing, adjusting and tinkering. It's the sheer bulk of the work that needs completing to get the game serviceable that's an issue in itself, before we even go anywhere near the deep-seated, crushing problems which have persisted since The Division 1 and seem to be unsolvable. Sorry to say, but... This is Fallout 76 Lite. It's not quite as buggy as Fallout 76. It's not quite as unfinished as Fallout 76. It's got a more effective fanboy community defending it than Fallout 76. It's not quite as boring as Fallout 76. It has fanboys demanding critical YouTubers be hated on like Fallout 76. It's got exactly the same returns policy as Fallout 76. It's a hell of a lot better looking than Fallout 76. And it's definitely got more promise than Fallout 76. But essentially, it's the same fucking thing. Just not quite as bad. It's got the advertising and public relations budget of a AAA title. But it's still basically an early access game. This is an unfinished product. Trading on the reputation of an existing franchise to win fuck tons of launch day sales based on hype. This is Fallout 76 Lite and precisely the same business model. Agent requesting backup. Just because they're not fucking up the launch quite as badly as Bethesda does not change that. Go watch a Fallout 76 critical review and compare notes. It's the exact same list of complaints, only not quite as bad. As someone said to me, I can't believe they've had a full-size team working on this for three years. So let's run the fucking maths. They claim that they've been working on this for three years. They claim that they have a new engine that will solve all the problems from The Division 1. They claim that this game will be an improvement on the predecessor. Well, after three years of hard work, the game launches in a month's time and all the broken shit from The Division 1 is still in the game with a whole load of new problems too. So, something doesn't add up. Three fucking years and a month from launch and the game is still broken with all the same bugs in it? Just precisely how many people were working on this for three years? A hundred? A thousand? Seven people? It just doesn't add up. If you're one of the cynical diehard veterans of The Division 1, then your predictions about the sequel are probably going to be right on the money and your doubts are well founded. It's going to be a rerun of the previous game. It's got some really interesting ideas and some fresh and enjoyable new takes on the franchise, but it's going to be the same old underfunded shit show with a huge amount of the original bugs included and an avalanche of pedo caches just because profits. It's no surprise then that a lot of veteran players are simply saying that they're going to give this one a pass and check how things are looking in six months time. And I think that's probably the best course of action. It'll do. But make no mistake, this is following the exact same script as Fallout 76 for a reason. They are both games as a service. Ubisoft are handling the situation much better than Bethesda because they have a very sophisticated and well-funded public relations apparatus. But it's the same business model. It's the same master plan. This game isn't even completed yet. And if you pre-order, you are paying upfront and full price for a promise of a game you may never see completed. And so far, they have not honoured all of the promises they made about this game. They can't even give us the stash space they sold to us in the pre-order and that was written on the fucking posters. 
This is not Ubisoft delivering us the big blockbuster sequel they promised. This is an invitation to participate in the ongoing journey of game development, where they have only made 20% of the game and expect us to invest for the full amount. And they have thus far not provided us with any evidence that they can be trusted to deliver. This is a pump and dump live service game. They fooled us once. It's up to you to decide whether you want to go around the roller coaster a second time. I will, of course, be playing The Division 2 for several important reasons. I'm a masochist who enjoys suffering. I want to take selfie cam pictures of myself with dead people. And so I can laugh hysterically with tears of ironic joy in my eyes when the bowl horror of the unprecedented microtransactions arrive. I'm sorry, but I genuinely believe that it will be comedy gold watching an entire community of fanboys and social media advertisers try to defend and justify what is predicted to be Ubisoft's most shameless attempt at hypermonetization in a video game. But for now, good luck and happy hunting. Thank you.